Okay, everybody, welcome back. We are now talking about measuring crime. We're on to chapter six in your textbook and module seven, I believe. Moving right along. I believe your midterm is actually next week, too, so please don't forget to do that. Uh, that will be a very important part of your grade, so you may want to make sure that you don't miss out on that opportunity. Uh, so this week we're going to be talking about measuring crime. Uh, I'm going to give you guys some of the high points and the important parts and add my, you know, two cents, even though you've probably picked up by now that my two cents is more like ten cents. <laughs> yeah, right. You guys are laughing, I'm sure. Anyway. I think this is probably one of the easier modules, to be honest with you. Measuring crime is not uh, as complicated, especially after you heard me talking about all this validity stuff last class and reading all of that. Uh, this will probably be a little bit more straightforward and easier to grasp. So with that said, uh, let's just jump right into kind of the introduction of this. It's crime you can kind of see it can be an independent variable or a dependent variable depending upon what you want to do. It can also be both. It could be drug use uh, predicting other crimes. Since drug use is a crime in and of itself and other crimes are also a crime, it can be both, right? Um, so there's some general issues with measuring crimes. Uh, you want to think about what offenses, what units of analysis, uh, such as do you want an individual level, uh, you want to look at offenses or incidents. The UCR actually has a county level uh, file as well where you can look at the number of offenses in each county, stuff like that. Uh, what purposes you want to use it for, uh, agency accountability, research, stuff like that. Uh, crimes known to police. Now this is probably the most commonly used part of the UCR is not necessarily the arrest, but the crimes known to police. So remember, we're trying to measure crime, not arrests, and arrests are something different. Uh, and this is the most popular thing that's uh, used, obviously. Uh, what crimes are not measured well by the police? Assaults, robberies, stuff like that, because they don't get reported. Uh, and so this is an important part of this. The uniform crime reports are what we usually use uh, for measuring crimes known to police. Uh, and they started in uh, the 1930s. Uh, the FBI collects all of this data. Uh, originally it was voluntary, but now it's quite common. Pretty much every state uh, submits something, although Florida and Illinois are pretty sketchy with their data. So if you ever use any UCR data from Florida or Illinois, uh, I would caution you to make sure that each of the counties or what they call OLRIs, uh, Original Reporting Entity, uh, are reporting to those because if you look at Florida and Illinois sometimes, they don't have that many offenses that they've reported, uh, which is because they haven't gotten all the information from everybody. Uh, the UCR divides it up into Type 1 and Type 2 offenses. Uh, you can see all of them listed there, the Type 1 offenses. And I generally just tell everybody the Type 1s are your, kind of your big, major, uh, more serious offenses. Uh, and then Type 2 is your lesser offenses, your marijuana possessions and drunk driving and things like that. Um, and like I said, it's summary based and they also have group level analysis like the counties and stuff like that. Uh, so the UCR criteria and measurement quality, uh, it's not exclusive or exhaustive, so we don't, you know, know from each and every law enforcement agency in the country what their arrests are, and sometimes, like I said, it's, it's kind of uh, wishy-washy whether they've always reported everything and all the information on everything. Uh, but it is one of the best measures that we have, um, so... It's something to think about. Uh, in order to kind of get past that, they've also created uh, the Supplemental Homicide Reports, uh, which give more detailed information about homicide events, uh, because the regular UCR data doesn't have all that much information in there, but for the homicides, uh, you can actually find more information, which is actually uh, pretty, incident, pretty inf inter interesting. <laughs> wow. Uh, so... 
Uh, in order to kind of circumvent some of the limitations of the UCR, they've actually created also what is known as the NIBRUS data. Uh, and so this actually has a few more offenses. It's 48 group A offenses, and then compared to the uh, part one offenses that were A there. Uh, and so this is based on incidents. Uh, and they're really trying to use this data more, although even less states and entities report to the NIBRUS than they do to the UCR. So it's better data, it's just that people don't report as often, so that causes a problem. Uh, some other revisions, the hierarchy rule has been dropped, uh, so they're not working so much dealing with that. Uh, the victim type, uh, they have information on that. Attempted and completed, they know about that. Drug-related offenses has more information. Computers and crime is a new thing. Uh, and then quality control, states require certification and stuff like that to make sure that the quality of the data they're getting is a little bit better. Uh, so getting rid of the hierarchy rule means that offense classifications are mutually exclusive, uh, but they're not exhaustive. So that means that they're, it used to be the UCR, what they would do is they would just report the most serious offense, which was known as the hierarchy rule. And so you could have an arrest, you could be arrested for a whole bunch of stuff, but they would just report the most serious thing. And so then the other stuff wouldn't even get put in there. Uh, NIBRS doesn't do this. They report every offense that the person had. Uh, so that kind of helps with the data uh, being a little bit more reflective of what's actually going on. If you wanted to look at DUI arrest, then maybe this guy was, uh, you know, arrested for a DUI, but he also, you know, if he had somebody hidden in the trunk. Uh, that he had kidnapped, then that was just going to reflect the kidnapping and not the DUI, which could be problematic, obviously. Um, so some other you know issues with that. Um, so measuring crime through victim surveys, uh, we have the National Crime Victimization Survey and stuff like that. Uh, and this is really important because it can get into these offenses that are not reported to the police. And that is known as the dark figure of crime. These, this number of crimes that go out there that don't get reported. Uh, so by actually surveying people to find out and ask them whether they've been the victim of a crime, you can kind of gauge uh, the level of crime a little bit better in an area than just going by police reports. Uh, you know, a lot of offenses get reported and some of them don't. Uh, you know, if we just looked at drunk driving, for example, uh, you know, there's a whole lot more drunk driving that goes on versus arrests. The most recent estimates indicate that there's one arrest for every thousand DUI trips. So, you know, you multiply the number of arrests times, you know, a thousand, and then you get your actual estimate of how many, you know, drunk driving offenses occur in the country, which is, you know, way more since we're arresting like 1.5 million people for DUIs. That's a whole lot of DUI offenses that occur. Uh, and, you know, I'm just using that as an example. Uh, so, the National Crime Victimization Survey started in 1972 by the Census Bureau, uh, and like I said, it gets at this dark figure of crime a little bit better. Uh, it doesn't measure all crimes. If it's victimization, then obviously it's asking about, you know, crimes that there's a victim. Uh, so, positive elements, it measures both reported and unreported crime, uh, independent of changes in reporting, uh, there's more information uh, how, about how the crime impacted the victim, uh, which the UCR would not provide any information on, and it also provides victim characteristics, which the UCR doesn't tell us anything about. Uh, so, the negative elements, uh, telescoping, incident dates, faulty memory, little information on offenders, people don't know, don't remember, things like that, uh, information on the criminal uh, justice response, if it's reported, uh, you know, is not really there that much. Uh, the victim may or may not know what happened to the person, uh, the, the offender, later on. Uh, it only includes residents of the United States, too. Uh, they're working on trying to redesign it to fix some of these issues, uh, more direct questions on rape and revising the screening instrument and stuff like that. Uh, this goes to how important survey design is. They're really trying to work on this. Uh, community victimization surveys started in the 60s. Uh, there's a few things that are important with that, a series of city level surveys. You don't hear as much about these as you do uh, about the National Crime Victimization Survey. Uh, because they're not quite as used as often. 
Uh, comparing victim surveys to crimes known to the police. Well, you could look at the UCR, the SHR, NIBRS victim surveys, all of these things uh, to get kind of this idea uh, or this estimate, so to speak, of how much crime is occurring. Uh, and they all have their limitations. So it's really very difficult for us to try to figure out what this dark figure of crime is, so to speak. And this is especially a problem with minor offenses, or problematic with, with minor offenses. Um, the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, as well as the Monitor in the Future uh, study, are two pretty good measures of drug use. Uh, the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, the NISDA data, uh, is uh, measuring households, and the Monitor in the Future data is measuring uh, juveniles, and usually uh, people in high school and middle school. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, you know, the national survey is based on a national sample. Uh, it's conducted in 71, 2004, uh, and it's been done annually since then. Uh, it includes, you know, questions on lifetime use, current use, heavy use, all this good stuff of, uh, uh, sorry, of drug use, yeah. Uh, and then Monitor of the Future started in 75, uh, it's done by the NIJ. Uh, it includes a lot of information on high school students and stuff like that and their drug use. It also includes alcohol and tobacco use as well, which is interesting. Uh, drug surveillance system. So there's also the Arrestee Drug Abuse Monitoring System and the Drug Abuse Warning Network. Now the ADAM, network, or ADAM data actually comes from arrestees. So it looks at the reports of people when they've been arrested and whether they had drugs in their system. Um, the Drug Abuse Warning Network comes from emergency rooms, and so that's all people that go to the emergency room uh, for uh, drug issues, usually overdoses and things like that, which have gone way up in the past couple of years because of fentanyl and all of those issues. Um, so for specific purposes, uh, local crime and self-report surveys, uh, you know, you can use those for pretty much anything. Uh, Incident-based crime reports, you might look at the Newark PD vehicle theft. Uh, and, and, you know, you can get this data a lot of times from local police departments, too. They'll, they'll provide it to researchers. I know I've gotten some stuff uh, when I lived back in Virginia uh, from the local PDs, which can give you a little bit more information than the UCR will. Uh, observing crime. I mean, you can just go out to places that are, have a lot of crime and observe it, right? Uh, shoplifting, bar drinking, violence. Uh, you know, it's interesting to go to bars and see the people that drink and whether they go get in their cars and drive or not. Um, anyway, uh, so the UCR and the SHR are really best for murder and crimes in which the victim is a business or a commercial establishment. Uh, and that's because most of the time for murder and those types of offenses, you're going to get them reported to the police. The police are going to know about it. Uh, those are the offenses that get the most reporting. Uh, murder, because, you know, there's usually a dead body that people call to report in business or commercial establishments because they want to collect the insurance money. Uh, that's why car automobile thefts are usually pretty highly reported as well because people want to notify their car insurance company and they require a police report. Uh, so self-report surveys, uh, NCVS is good. Uh, for getting a, about crimes against persons, but they won't necessarily work for the victimless crimes, like I said. Uh, and self-reports, you know, those are pretty good, but, uh, you know, they really rely on people's memory a little bit. Uh, so, you know, those are the different types of data that we use to measure crime. Like I said, they all have kind of their limitations, uh, but just kind of familiarize yourself with these things, and I don't think this is uh, too difficult to wrap your minds around, so hopefully you won't have any trouble with that. Um, and I will talk to you all next week.